Easter's almost here. You know that? We've got two more Sundays, and then it's Easter. It's coming quick, isn't it? It's coming quick. <laughs> but, you know, it's almost here. I'm excited about what God's going to do that day, you know, and uh, just be praying about our Easter services. We've got next week, and then uh, we got Palm Sunday after that, and that's going to be a, a great time, too. And Easter Day, we're just expecting God to do so it's a great thing. There's a great opportunity as us as a church to, to reach out to those who are far from God, those who are in our community, and, uh, and uh, give them an opportunity to hear the gospel. So I just want to um, just encourage you to, all, to be, well, see, we're already inviting people. We're already getting the word out about Easter Day, okay? We're doing that. But what I'm asking you to do is you get the word out as well. It's a great opportunity for you to invite your neighbors, your co-workers, um, the, the people in your neighborhoods to, to come here to, to Church 180 and share a special day. It's going to be, I know it's going to be packed this, um, today. It was, I mean, that day, um, the past couple of years we had Easter here, it was packed, okay? So get here a little bit early because the parking lot is going to fill up, you know, um, so it's, uh, we easily double our attendance. We've got a lot of people sick here um, this week, but um, we're praying for them. But we easily, we easily double our attendance that day. So be praying for it and be praying for those that are far from God. Hear the message of the gospel and make decisions to follow him. And uh, that's really our, our heart's desire, that people come into a relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. That's what it's all about, that those who are far from God experience him we already ordered 3500 easter eggs 3500 you're like wow that's a lot of easter eggs what are you going to do with all those we're going to put them in that field and literally two and a half minutes later they will be all off the ground not lying <laughs> man they go at it if you get a chance go out there and watch them it's just like time it because it's like bam right it takes more time to put them down than it does for them to pick them up so it's a great it's a great great day and we're looking forward to it's a great draw uh, for the community to come out we invite our community we don't we don't think they have to be part of our church to come to the easter egg hunt we want to be a blessing yeah, but it's in our opportunity to build relationships with people and, uh, and have a chance to invite people to be a part of Church 180. So I want to encourage you not to miss this opportunity to reach your neighbors, your coworkers, your friends, your family. And I promise you that they're going to hear the life-changing gospel of Jesus Christ. They're going to hear the message of hope. They're going to hear the message of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. They're going to hear the message of forgiveness, of repentance. They're going to hear the, the message of grace that we all need so much. But today what I want to do is I want to bring these, these past three weeks all together in this conclusion of this last message here of our Outcast series. And, uh, and I believe that God's been speaking to us so much. We, first of all, the first week we talked about the urgency of reaching those who are, who, are, who are far from God, those who are the outcasts, and those who m might seem unreachable. The second week we talked about the woman in the well and actually going out of our way to minister and to love people who, who need to be loved the most, those who are hurting, those who are bruised, those who, who, who are without hope. Because just after all, that's what Jesus did. Then we, last week we talked about Matthew and how God calls even outcasts and people who, who, who society doesn't even like to follow him. And he changes their lives and gives them new life and new purpose. Amen? Amen. Amen. But if you're a follower of Christ, you know, um, you know, it's how many of you know somebody who needs to hear the message of the gospel? Someone who needs to know Jesus Christ. We do. We all know people around us that if they were to, if they were to, 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 to God forbid, die, we know that they would, they, that, that, that they, 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 they leave this earth separated from Christ. And that's a very real fact that we've got, to, we've, we've got to know, we've got to realize. But if you're a follower of Christ, the Bible says that you're salt, you're the salt of the earth, right? And the light of the world. And it's our job, as, as our job as believers in Jesus Christ to bring the salt and bring the light to the, to the world that's around us. Jesus told us to go into all the world and to preach the gospel. He called it the Great Commission. And so many of us, we, 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 we kind of think that it's rather the great commission, it's the great suggestion. But the Bible says to go into all the world and to preach the gospel. Go to our neighbors, go to our co-workers, go into our neighborhoods 
and share the love and the life-changing power of Jesus Christ. And the book of Peter even says, always be prepared to give a reason for this hope that we have in Jesus Christ. This is what I want to remind you about reaching people for Jesus Christ. Easter's coming up. This is a, an awesome time for us to reach those who are far from God. I want to remind you of this. First of all, to share the love of Christ, you don't need a degree. You don't need to be an expert. You don't even need to have all the answers. We're commissioned by Jesus to go into all the world to be ambassadors. An ambassador is somebody who represents him in this world, that speaks on his behalf. We're filled with his spirit, and, and we're called to reach people for Christ. And today, what I want to do real quick as we end this message series is I want to give you three ways, very practical message today, three ways that you can share your faith in Christ, okay? You ever been a little bit intimidated to share your faith? Sometimes it's challenging. Sometimes we don't know what, what to do, and we get a little bit nervous, and we're just kind of like, ah, I'm not a good speaker. I don't know if I can really tell them and, and for them to understand. But I want to give you three ways today in sharing the love of Jesus. Because we need to be sharing this, this, this experience that we had with Jesus. We need to experience and, 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 and share the love that's been poured out into our own lives. So first of all, the first way we can share faith, our faith is that we can, you can, use what you have. In fact, it's the very first way we see the gospel spread by an unlikely candidate. We talked about him last week, Matthew. Matthew was a follower. He was a tax collector, and he was, a, he was actually despised in his community. He was despised by the Jewish people because he, he, was, he was a tax collector. They were dishonest. They had to collect a certain amount for Caesar, but what happened often is that they collect a little bit extra to put in their own pocket. He became very wealthy and had a lot of money at other people's expenses, and the people who knew him despised him because he stole them. They were, they're already having a hard time, but they were, he was making life harder because he was, he was taking from them an unfair tax that was not even, wasn't even, even right. He was a despised tax collector. He was an outcast, and the people in his, in his town, people didn't like him. But when Jesus changed Matthew's life, he simply couldn't keep the love of Jesus to himself. And the Bible talks about this. Jesus walks right up to the booth that Matthew's at and says, Hey, Matthew, come follow me. And Matthew left everything that he had. He left the, 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 the tax booth. He left, he left his profession. He left everything that he had to follow Jesus. But think about it. Matthew didn't, have, didn't, didn't, didn't know anything about how to share his faith. He wasn't a preacher with any kind of religious training. He didn't go to Bible school. He didn't go to, he didn't go to seminary. He, he would have failed miserably at handling objections to the gospel of Jesus Christ. And, and Matthew had never even led maybe even a, a connect group or never led something like a, in the children's ministry. He had no church experience. But one thing this guy did know how to do, the Bible says, is to throw a party. <laughs> <laughs> it's one thing he knew, and that's exactly what he did. He, he basically threw some burgers on the grill. He got the grill all set. He, he put the, the big game on the flat screen TV. He, he set up the, the volleyball net. He got fire for the, for the bonfire pit, and he got ready to have a party, and he sent out the invites. A little modernized it a little bit for you right there. But here's how Luke um, reported on this party. In, in the book of Luke, chapter 5, 29, it says, Then Matthew held a great banquet for Jesus at his house and a large crowd of tax collectors. So here he, he's experienced the love of Jesus Christ. His life has been transformed. It doesn't say that he invited a bunch of church people over his house. He invited his friends. The people that he knew. The people that were closest to him. And a large crowd of tax collectors and others were eating with him. But the Pharisees and the teachers of the law who belonged to their sect complained to his disciples, Why do you eat and drink with tax collectors and sinners? And Jesus answered them, It is not the healthy who needs a doctor, but the sick. I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. All Matthew did is that he called his friends and his buddies and invited them to a party. <laughs> He used what he had. He, he, he had. he had a home and he had a place that, that he could invite people to. 
In the same way, you can use what you have to reach those who are around you. What do you have that that can help reach people? What is it that you have in your possession that that you have that God has given you to be able to to relate to other people and use it for God's glory? I mean, maybe you can cook. Maybe you need to invite some college students or maybe some some sub-schoolers to your house, some young guys to your house, and and feed them. I'm sure before long, there's going to be a crowd. And they're going to be sitting around your table, and eventually you'll be sitting around the table eating great food, and, 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 and conversation will come up, and pretty soon you'll be talking about the bread of life. What else can you use? Maybe if you have extra time, maybe you can use your time to invest in relationships. Maybe you can find a way to, to serve the community. Maybe investing your time like that because the more you serve, the bigger difference you can make in the lives of others. We need to find out what we have and we've got to use it. Amen? You following me? What do you have that you can use for God's glory? See, God can use you while you use what God has given you to reach people. Like Matthew, we need to build relationships. Matthew used a very relational approach. He he, he structured an atmosphere where he could sit down with people and he could eat dinner with them and have conversation and build their trust. You know, there's something that said to be said about building relationships. Within the context of relationship, we build trust. We build a pathway into people's lives where they'll they'll hear us and 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 we'll have their ear. Second way you can reach people is you can invite someone to church. John told a powerful story about a woman who had experienced a lot of hurts in his lives, and we talked about it a couple of weeks ago. I mean, she was she was married to five women. I mean, she was married to five men. She'd been divorced, and the guy that she was living with at the time, she wasn't even married to. She had experienced a whole lot of hurt in her life. And her relationship status was just totally a, a mess. It was a wreck. She experienced so much hurt. And it took a toll on her life. But when she met Jesus, she offered, he offered her living water, a relationship that would change her life forever. Jesus offered her, she was looking for something in those relationships. She was looking for something and never quite found it. She was looking for satisfaction. She was looking for something that would fulfill her in a way that only Jesus could fulfill her. And when Jesus changed her life, her her life was changed forever. She couldn't find the the love that she was looking for in a a man. She couldn't couldn't find that love that she was looking for in a relationship with, with another person. But she found what she was looking for only in Jesus Christ. There's a part of every human being who longs for a relationship with their creator. There's a part of us that just yearns to know God. And people are searching and looking and they're, and they're, and they're thirsty and they want to drink of that, of, that, of that living water. And we have that message. We have that living water to give to them. So we've got to be looking for opportunities to build those relationships, to build that trust, to share the love of Christ with them. Maybe, it, and this is what happened with this lady, the Samaritan woman. We, we, we read about it earlier. Well, let's read, it. Let's read in uh, John 4, 28. We read about this a couple of weeks ago. Then leaving her water jar, remember she went and Jesus was waiting for her. Normally she went to collect water early in the morning when everybody else went. But, you know, because of, her, because of all her, her failures and misfortunes and, the, and who she was, the reputation that she built, she was ashamed to go to the water well when the other ladies were there. She was embarrassed because people were chatting and, and gossiping, you know, all those things that were going on. So she, so, so she decided, I'm going to just skip all that, and I'm going to go at noon. And here was Jesus on his way to Galilee with his disciples. They could have gone the route that... Jews normally did and, and go way around the Samaria because they didn't like Samaritans. They did everything they could to avoid them. But Jesus said, no, I've got to go to Samaria. And he met this lady at the well. And it forever changed his life. So then, leaving her water jar, the woman went back to the town and said to the people, come see a man who told me everything i ever did could this be the messiah and they came out of the town and made their way towards him so what did she do 
She didn't memorize a script. She didn't, she, didn't, she didn't preach a sermon. She didn't lead anyone in a prayer. She simply invited everyone to come meet the one who had changed their life. Come where I had an encounter with God. I want you to meet this person that changed my life. And you and I can do the same thing. As you look around, you'll see people every day who are in need of God's grace. And sometimes it's as easy as inviting them to church. This is a place where they can encounter God, where they can experience his presence, where they will hear the the message of Jesus Christ. This is a place where they can come in contact with the Savior. This is a place where they can experience salvation. It could happen while you're at work. It could happen in your neighborhood. But maybe maybe for some of you, it might be just, hey, I'm going to invite this person, and they're going to hear the message at Church 180. Their life is going to be changed. You'll see somebody in your class who's hurting looking for comfort. You'll see someone at the gym who's discouraged and doesn't have any hope. You're, you're, you'll see someone at, at work who's searching in need of direction. And remember this, is that it only takes one invitation to change a life. Your invite can change a life. You get, you get invite cards in your bulletin every single week. I encourage you to use them to invite people, especially as, as Easter is coming, as Easter is approaching, that, that we, we, we pray and we ask God, who is it, Lord, that you want me to invite? Who is it, Lord, that, that, that needs to be reached out to? Who is it, Lord, that you need me to show the love of Jesus Christ to? Who can I serve? Who can I give to? Who can I love? Who needs comfort? Who needs help? This past week, Charlene Tops, and many of you know her here at church, <laughs> she reported and, she, and she, she told us this. She said, you know, Pastor Jeff, I, I was so excited this week. I know Easter's coming. I've been praying about it. And I, I, I was able to, to ask somebody at work about, to come to Church 180 for Easter service. And guess what? They said yes. They said yes. I was so excited. I was praising God. You know, if you ask somebody, they're going to come. I believe that they will come. You don't believe me, do you? Try it. To go with Easter, if you want to go the statistical route, about 85% of the people who you ask to Easter probably will come. You have pretty good chances for Easter service. So I, inv- I, I encourage you to invite, I encourage you to, to, to seek out and pray for those who, who God is leading you to do. To invite. Your invite can change a life. Be the salt of the earth, the light of the world. I believe that God can use you to invite people to Christ, and he'll do it. And number three, we can share, you can share your story. One time Jesus healed a blind man, and it became pretty public. Uh, a blind man came to Jesus wanting to be healed, and, 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 uh, and, and the disciples asked, hey, uh, hey, Jesus, why is this guy even blind? Why is this guy blind? Is it because his, his parents sinned? And Jesus said, no, it's so that, 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 that my glory can be made manifest through this. So he, Jesus said, um, bent down, spit in the dirt, and, and made some mud and put it on the guy's eyes. And said, all right, go wash your eyes off in the pool of Siloam, and you will be healed. And the man was healed. So the word of this, this healing got out, and everybody count, found out about it, and the religious leaders of the time were so upset because they didn't like Jesus, they didn't understand necessarily what he was about, they didn't, they didn't see him as the son of God, and they wanted to just, just push him to us to the side, they wanted to downplay everything that he did, and they called him a sinner, because his healing took place on the Sabbath. They were skeptics, they criticized him, calling him a fake, and they, and they didn't want to believe. They and, and said since Jesus healed someone on the Sabbath that he was a sinner. But then the, the, the man belted back, the, the healed man belted back. After accusing Jesus of being a sinner, he said this in, in John 9, 25, he replied, whether Jesus is a sinner or not, I do not know. One thing that I do know is that once I was blind, but now I can see. What did the man do? He told his story. I I believe that every single person here has a story. You have a story that you can share. You have a story that you can tell somebody. How has Jesus affected your life? What what is your salvation story? How how did you come to know Christ? And and how can you tell other people about what God has done in your life? I'm going to have the band come up, please. John 9, 26, 27 says, And then they asked him, What did Jesus do to you? 
How did he open your eyes? He answered, I've told you already, and you did not listen. Why? Why do you want to hear again? Do you want to become a disciple of Jesus too? (laughs) I love this. (laughs) He said, do you want to hear it again? Do you want to be a disciple of Jesus as well? I remember when I first got saved, when I first became to, to know Jesus Christ, some of you, you've heard this story already, but I knew about God, but I didn't know God. I knew about the Bible, but I didn't know the author of the Bible. I grew up in, I grew up in church. I grew up in the church world, so to speak. But when I became a teenager, I just left it all behind and said, God, you know what? I'm done with this. I want to live my own life. I want to do things my own way. And I did. And I experienced everything that I wanted to experience. I went out and did all the things I wanted to do. I lived my own life. When I was 20 years old, in the midst of my shame, in the midst of my hurt, I gave my life to Christ and I experienced him. And he changed me and he he gave me a desire to follow him, a desire to live for him. I went from knowing about God to knowing God. And today I believe that that God wants the the same thing to happen to you. I believe that God wants the same thing to happen in your life. I believe that that God wants the, the same thing to happen in the people that we have contact with every single day in their life. And how can we do it? We can do it through what we have. We can invite somebody to church and we can share our story. And I remember in those, those times when I first got saved, when I first became a follower of Christ, how I shared my story and how other people found, found Jesus Christ. I remember this young guy named Todd, about my same age at the time. Todd was a drug addict. Dr- Todd was far from God. He, he only went to church maybe a couple times in his life. He said once for a wedding, once for a funeral. He didn't know who Jesus was. He didn't even know the gospel of Jesus Christ. But as I shared my story, at first he began to mock me. At first he began to to say all these things about me that that just, uh, that that kind of, and I, I had to keep from being offended at the time because they were hurtful. But I kept on sharing my story time after time after time as he asked questions, as he, as he became curious. One day he finally received Christ. One day he, he came to me and he said, I, 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 tell me about this Jesus that changed your life. And, and I said, hey, and I told him, and, and he, I said, well, can we, pray, can we pray right now? And he said, no, I don't really want to pray right now. And I said, well, well, go home. Go home and talk to him. He went home, and God changed his life. Another guy around the same time I told my story to, he was unreachable. He was angry. He was mad. He's one of those people, you're like, man, they're never going to come to Christ. I shared my story time after time after time, and I found out one Sunday he ended up finding his way to a church. He gave his life to Christ and got water baptized that same day. So I shared my story, and I believe that the same Jesus that transformed my life can transform yours and can transform those around us. Let's pray. Father, we all have people in our lives right now that we know that need you. People who are far from God, those who might seem like they, they're, they're unreachable. They might seem people like they, they, they've never come to Christ. And we, Father, in our own mind, we just, we just feel like, man, that's kind of, that seems like an impossibility, Lord. But Lord, you are the God who, who reaches after the outcast. You're the God that reaches out to those who are in love, the unreachable. Lord, you reach them and you change their lives. So today, Lord, as we leave this place, Lord, I ask that you do a work in our heart. You empower us. You enable us to go and to reach those who are far from you. Lord, that we we'd, we'd pray and ask you to, to show us what to say and what to do to reach those who are far from God. Today, how many of you know someone who's far from Christ? You want to pray for them right now. I want you to raise your hand. Somebody who's far from Christ that God's setting on your heart, you want to pray for them right now. We're going to pray for them. We're going to believe that God's going to give you an opportunity. We're going to believe that God will give you divine appointments and give you words to say so that lives will be changed for his glory, that people would come to know him as their Lord and Savior. Lord, you see these hands here today. 
You desire them to come to you more than we do. It's your desire for them to, to come into fellowship with you, Lord. Today, Lord, I ask in Jesus' name that you, that you, that you lift the blinders, Lord that you remove the blinders, Lord, that they see the truth and, and hear the truth, Lord, and respond to it. Father, for calloused hearts, soften them, Lord. Prepare the way before us. Give us words to speak. Lord, give us opportunities to show your love. We thank you in Jesus' name. Maybe you're here today, you've never experienced Jesus for yourself. Maybe you're here today, you, you've never made a commitment to follow Jesus Christ. Today, I want to give you that opportunity to, to, to follow him, to, 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 for your life to be changed, to give you newness of life. Jesus Christ came to earth. He died. He came as a, as a, a, as a baby, he lived a sinless and perfect life. He was born of a virgin. And he came to the earth for the sole purpose. God came to earth and, 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 and sent his son, Jesus, to die for your sins, to take your sins upon him. He came and he paid a price that you couldn't pay, and he paid a debt that he didn't owe. Somebody has to pay for our sins. Either, either we do or he does. And, and if we do, we, it's an eternity separated from him. And if he does, we get eternity with him. The Bible says in John 3, 3, that unless a man be born again, he cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. And, and, and later on in chapter 9, it says, you must be born again. You must experience newness of life. So what we do is we, we, we turn from our ways we repent of our sin and we turn to Jesus. Say, Jesus, forgive me of my sin. Come into my life. I live my life for you. And when we do that, he gives us newness of life. And if that's your prayer for today, I encourage you. I encourage you to live for him. Father, I thank you for your word today. I thank you for what you've done in this place and for your spirit and how it's moving. Today, Lord, we just ask that as we leave this place, Lord, that you empower us, you enable us to reach those who are around us, those, Lord, who are far from God. Today, we worship you, we praise you, and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.